So yesterday we started reading Follow the Moon. And so now we are going to find out exactly what happens. Um, we're going to find out what is her claim and what does she do to um, try to convince people. On Monday morning, Clementine and I raised our hands first. We told the class that we'd learned and observed about loggerhead sea turtles. The sea turtle eggs are starting to hatch, I went on. To save the hatchlings, we need the whole class, the whole town, to help. And that's how Lights Out for Loggerheads began. Our classroom began the Loggerhead Lab. First, we gathered lots of information. We read books, we visited an aquarium and a sea turtle hospital. We asked someone from the South Carolina Marine Turtle Conservation Program to speak to our class. We all brainstormed solutions, choosing the best ideas. Then we got to work. We made posters and delivered them all over town. We wrote fact sheets for all the vacation beach houses. To pay for printing our flyers and posters, we held a bake sale. Andy, the coffee shop man, donated a whole pan of his famous granola. Happy to help! The editor promised to put my article in the community newspaper. Nice to have a new writer in town, she said. The printer gave us a discount for the logger heads. Rebecca and Max learned how to spread the word on the internet, and Mr. J helped us write a press release. I was on TV as a class spokesman. <clears throat> now, if I wasn't sure what a press release was, the next few words said I was on TV, so it kind of lets me know that that has something to do with being on TV. We invited volunteers from Scoot, which was the South Carolina United Turtle Enthusiasts, to a town meeting. When the big night arrived, the room was packed. The room buzzed with ideas. We talked about how to make our beach a great place for the turtles, how to mark, how to mark the nest, how to run nightly patrols, what to do if hatchlings get in trouble. They've done a lot of work, haven't they? At the end, we decided to form our own volunteer group. People cheered for our class, Mr. J. Bean. I'm so proud of you all. That was the best night ever until. On the last evening of summer school, we went on a turtle patrol. Lots of parents came too. Everyone smiled as we watched the lights along the beach go out one by one. We had done it. Suddenly, a movement on the sand caught my eye. Over here, I whispered. We crept closer, careful to stay quiet. A crescent moon shone on the waves. The sea glittered like silver. I made out the f I made out first one, then two hatchlings. Soon the sand seemed to be boiled over with life. Tiny turtles, no more than two inches long, burst from their nest. We watched, barely daring to breathe. Would they know where to go? Then they were off, scurrying, scurrying over the sand and into the shimmering sea. We stood together, smiling and silent with wonder. Then, just like the turtles, we followed the moon home. So, let's talk for a minute um, about a couple things. The first thing is, what do we think the author's claim was? Like, we kind of made a prediction yesterday but now we know, like I know the author's um, claim was to um, the lots need to be turned off in the beach houses to save the sea turtles. And her audience was the people living in the beach homes. And so um, they, they got data and they researched and they came up with all this proof that the lots were being a problem and came up with a way to solve it. Um, what do you think the author's purpose of this story was? Like, why did they write this story? Were they trying to explain to me how sea turtles get to the ocean? Were they trying to tell me how to save a, a sea turtle? Or do you think they were trying to convince me to um, to turn the lights off when I go to the, when I stay at a beach house or something like that? But the key word there is convince. The author's purpose for writing this story was to convince us to help save the sea turtles. So I hope you enjoyed this book. And then um, I will put a little activity on there for you to 
um, keep practicing those argumentative skills.